So for them, they increased the aggressive frame shotgun cone angle from 4.0 to 4.25. So they're literally making it bigger for more spread to go within that angle, right? Yep, and that's a big change. We've talked about cone angle before. These sound like small numbers, but even like 0.25 is a, I believe like a large, a considerable difference. It might sm sound small, but that, I think that's a considerable difference. I don't know if you'd agree with that. So like in everything I've done with testing and you guys can too at home, like when you go up into a wall, I'm pretty sure it really feels like shotgun pellets come out like kind of like a buzzsaw. Like they go in a circular motion and out kind of like a like a twister coming at you so when that's mm -hmm. getting bigger that's more times for it to miss within that cone um and also like at longer ranges and they say right here we and uh, we went over it with fallout and i can bring that back up um well it's gone but reduce shotgun damage fall off minimum by two meters and increase the shotgun damage fall off maximum by two meters and again to kind of explain that if fell winters hits at eight meters does 22 per pellet it's now going to do that at six meters doing 22 per pellet before it had an eight meter kill and let's say it started having fall off at 12 meters to where after that you start seeing immune if you guys have tried to land really deep shotgun shots so they've extended the damage fall off by two meters i don't know if it's like when i read it again drew yeah. i don't know if that's going to be a wash or if they're actually extending it past what it is right now because mm. if they if they go from eight to six, say it was eight and twelve, and it might go six to ten. I think it's going to go six to ten. I think it's going to go too. further. And what? So what? Uh, jargon aside, I think what this practically means is one hit kills are going to be less frequent, especially with aggressives, which are getting their consistency actually hurt. It's actually they're going to have less consistency and as a result their ease of use is not going to be as good unless you're really in close range and all shotguns though they are going to have less one hit kills soon or your one hit kills are going to have to be sooner and closer up but they're going to allow you more opportunity to either two tap with a shotgun but let's be real no one's no mid to high skill players looking to two tap with a shotgun what this really means is it's going to prioritize you to have to prime your target or or clean up your target with primary damage meaning you know prime your target with damage then go in for a shotgun and it'll kill deep maybe even deeper than it currently does because of the damage changes or you shotgun them get damage and then be prepared to swap to your primary to clean them up so that's and, what that really means and i love that so in going back to that role, engaging at point blank range. So I would assume six meters and in, that's going to be more of a guaranteed kill. It should be, right? Yeah, it should be. Um, using skill at movement or position to get close enough to get a one or two hit elim. I really do think you're like, we're going to see top tree arc striders. We're going to see bottom tree strikers with knockout. Yep. We're going to see syntheseps. Yep. Because yeah. that's a great point, man. That's a really good point because this means that, again, you need something to clean up with now. Whether that is a primary, like I said, sure you can go for the two tap, but that's not the fastest option. The higher, highest skill players and like people looking to be as effective as possible aren't gonna go for that two tap the majority of the time, I wanna say. What they are gonna go for is cleanups with primaries or like you just said, which is really huge, melees. The, the shoddy melee is going to be a it's lot more be back. important now yeah it's gonna it's be back lot. and big dude yeah, back. Yeah. And, yeah. and honestly that brings back a lot of exotics that because stasis pushed them out because uh i mean fell winters all, all the ag frame shotguns pushed them out yep. um yeah like celestial fire is good but like it brings back uh assassin's cow dude with top tree getting that yep. lunge going in is after the kill like you can actually use that exotic again because within that space, dude, eight or 10 meters and in really, because you know, of priming. 10 meters and in is a, is a, is a no-go zone for a lot of stuff in the game right now. Yep. And if, yes, they're, if they're bringing everything in two meters, that's huge. Like that does mean you're gonna have, uh, you know, room to use some of these exotics that we haven't used in a long time and prioritize the shotgun beatdown. So like, in theory, the Warlocks should be better because they do have the extended, you know, a better melee than anything yep. in the game. And you put yep. on Ophidians, it has even more of a melee. You're going to see point. those 
Like I, I could see this like a lot of transversive steps users switch to Ophidians. Yeah, because they're gonna get the draw time, which is most important now. We talked about primary cleanups are gonna be bigger, better, and more required than ever. And then the melee range on top of that, they literally help a shotgun in every way. Yeah. So I think that's huge. yeah. Yeah, if you guys are warlock mains, man, definitely get comfy with the aspects. Because dude, I love the steps. I use the steps a good amount. Um, but warlock to me, like I think they've always had some of the best neutral exotics. I really do. Um, so I, I'm not going to, or I don't mind switching back to Ophidians, dude. So that's going to be pretty good. To, I wanted to quickly talk about what you think and how we think this is going to shape the shotgun metagame. Are precision shotguns going to rise up? Because I think from reading this, they are. I think precision I, shotguns I have this insane range bar. Like I, like I have a retold with nearly 100 range. We got like exotics like uh, the duality, which acts like a precision from the hip that it, it has a ton of range. We have the previously we think to ourselves, it's meaningless. Everyone was kind of like, like, OK, you got range on this, but is it doing anything? But now I think because the damage all off maximum is being pushed out they're going to be able to take more advantage of this and it means that you are going to be able to get better cleanups and remember they're not being hit by their consistency they're both going to be more consistent than aggressives now potentially and they're going to have better range for cleanups with like we said melees primaries etc and yeah, on top of it I, I think that um I was going to say that I think that like things like duality are, are going to shine a lot because of that, because it's a precision from the hip. What were you going to say? Chap Chaperone's going to be one of the oh, best I mean, in the game. No, but, oh, but uh, yeah. help, help, me, help me remember, there's a special perk within the frame on that shotgun. If I remember correctly, it's either hits or kills. I think it's kills, but after you get a kill with a retold, doesn't it fire faster? That is the aggressives actually that do that. Oh, it's, it's the aggressives. Honestly, I don't know what the precisions do. They do have the precision thing. I don't know if it's just the recoil direction like it is on other archetypes. It's really odd that that would be on a shotgun. Um, but yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, precision archetype also do inherently have relatively faster two taps. So that is yeah. an option. Same with lightweight. So those actually become a little bit more viable. With aggressives, you're not going to go for that. But with, with precisions looking like the best of the both worlds now, potentially... Yeah, they could uh i really think they're gonna rise up i think precisions are gonna be the way to go can you look and dim for me at that frame yeah yeah so the one that you mentioned on the aggressives but that the precision archetype on the um the precision archetype I on those shotguns i don't know what it does it's just the basic precision archetype it's not like the 180 hand cannons oh where they get more the whole right it says here vertical. yeah this weapon's recall pattern is more predictively vertical which if that's consistent with every other weapon type it means it's a free counterbalance essentially and on a shotgun i don't quite understand i'll take it like yeah yeah you know like why, why that's a thing but i guess i don't think that's uh, gonna help yeah i don't know about that all right so moving on 120s yep, let's move on uh I, I think we all know uh, we believe that they're still a little too rangy. We all know how good these things are. Uh, they benefit way too much from a small damage buff for two tapping. It's tricky because they're uh, not how much different they are from their pre Beyond Light form. Because remember, they buffed them to 120 RPM. Uh, but with Rampage, you can two tap. They have a tremendous ease of use. The two tapping potential since the buff and Beyond Light and the new 120s and Seas of the Chosen encouraged a lot of people to try them out. With this change, we expect other primaries to become viable, where previously 120s ate their lunch, including adaptive hand cannons, pulses, scouts, and auto rifles, which is good for the game, allowing 120s to keep their advantage <coughs> of hard-hitting peak shotting at a range. So, reduce the precision damage multiplier from 1.8 to 1.6. This is going to reduce the 10% damage bonus from allowing two tapping in PvP. And we went through the math that should do 80 to the head correct yeah i yeah it that is correct and i don't know about you man i love this change i think the problem with this archetype was 100 percent the damage of the weapon type and not so much as much the range I, I think the range does matter don't get me wrong but i really think it was the damage and the fact that it can be combined with rampage for such immediate two taps available and with so many things it would uh it would still two tap um that being said it still does two tap if you get charged with light you're still two tapping 
because yeah, that's, and that's a twenty percent. So, You're going about that. You were talking about multi kill clip earlier. Yeah, so they reduce the damage multiplier, so it should do eighty the head, fifty the body, right? And that's kind of weird to yep. me now. Now that I kind of think about it out loud, eighty the head, yep. fifty the body, because they're not touching the the base body damage, so it'll still two head one body. Important but to know just... though, it'll never one head two body anymore. Never. So resilience actually is less valuable now. Yeah. But yeah, go on. Their main thing was preventing the two taps with rampage. Mm -hmm. But if you have a bottom dollar with multi kill clip, like yeah, I want to show you this real quick, chat. I have, well, at least I'll, I'll tell you about it. It has 91 range, outlaw, multi kill clip, accurized rounds, hammer forged rifling. Um, so multi kill clip, I forget what it is at, at the. It is 20%. Like 20 percent. For, I believe for it a is times yeah. one. Yeah, I think it's 15. 20%. Or is it 15? I was nearly positive it was 20, but I could be wrong. It could be 20. It's probably 20. So that means it would do, like we said, 96. Because it used to do 100. It used to do like 102, 101. Oh, apparently it's 17%. Okay, we're actually both wrong. It's in between. So it's 17%. Okay. Let's run some math. So what here. is that? 80 times 1.7. Oh, uh, wait. 1.17. My mistake. So that's 93.6 damage. And that times two, it's 187. So that, depending how rounding <laughs> goes, could be maybe a two tap at zero res. I believe that's oh, zero yeah. res or think, one I res or something all like around, that. All around, they destroyed the two taps on these things. The only thing is if you had an old criminals with kill clip. That's the only thing. Yeah. Or Sturm. Or Sturm. Good. Or Sturm. Love to see that being more unique. Question though. I want to confirm this now as well. Is high energy fire, if anyone knows in chat, high energy fire, I always thought that was 20%. If anyone can confirm that, because if it is 20%, that means it's it still is two tapping. It, it, is, it is 20. Okay, it is 20. Okay, so that means with high energy fire, it will still two tap. So what do you think of that? You, do you think this is a good change then? I do. Because you have to think. Enough. Because once we, once we go through the rest of these changes, it all kind of coexists. So reduce the aim assist minimum fall off distance mm -hmm. by one to two meters, depending on the range stat. Reduce the damage minimum fall off by one meter. So they already like brought him back, what, two to three meters? In this recent update for Spicer? They used to, like I said, yeah. they used to hit at 45, yeah. 47. Now, like the higher range rolls, like max is like 41, 42. So it's, dude, honestly, it's, it's bringing them, like if you have a well rolled, like Ace of Spades immediately. Uh, when I yep. think of Rage Stab, even like a well rolled um, palindrome. Yep. Like it's gonna yep. be it's gonna be competing with the one twenties, dude. Yeah. For sure. But like so they reduce that. So this reduces their damage fall off advantage over other hand cannons at one meter. As usual, this is one meter before the zoom scaler. So they do it by hip fire. Um yep. they reduce the aim assist. So I think a lot of them are gonna live in 37 to 40 meters that's how i get from this too i think a lot of them are gonna live within that like I, I was thinking like maybe 38 to 42 37 to 42 meter range um and remember that it's still gonna take you getting a, an incredibly well rolled 140 to kind of invade on that a little bit but for yeah. the average 140 uh, and an average 120, I want to say, or like a decent 120, they're going to kind of coexist right one right after the other, maybe some slight overlap between them in the mid 30, high 30 range. So I think that's good. I well, that's another good. huge thing, because they used to do 90 and then, like, then you add on the damage of Rampage yeah. and well over 100. The yeah. fall off that you had because it's base is just so high. You're starting at 80 now. It's so, like the moment that you get, say you start having fall off at 37, the moment you get to 38, that's starting to hit and, and like hand cannon fall off is ridiculous dude like yeah when you take two steps it'll lose seven damage right <laughs> like, yeah mm -hmm. so that 80 is gonna fall really quickly beyond where you can't three tap anymore yeah and that that's so a like, big deal because like you said like that before the damage was higher which means you had more leeway more distance you can go with that damage dropping off where you could still three tap because you can three you can three tap as long as you're hitting 66 damage and that's just three headshots right um, so now that it's less damage, that window of how far you can go while your damage drops off and artificially extends your range is now shorter. Like, what will they do in an empowering rift? Like, they can't two-tap an empowering rift either. 
Uh, they can. 20%. Oh, 20. Same as high energy fire. You're right. The I had a question on this. Um, oh, Sturm. We talked about Sturm briefly. Will Sturm still be able to, like... Does that... It, it's still one head, one body, right? Yeah, That doesn't dude, alter I mean, that? It... Or does that become a two head? I, I'm not sure what those numbers look like. I don't have that off the top of my head. It does beefy. It's just like 160 to the head, 170. So I would, I would assume it's just... I'd it's, assume... It's gonna be a... Yeah. Dude, I, I don't know. Still. The more I think about it, that, that might push it to a two head. I like, might get I, resilience I, gated is what it sounds I like. I think it might get resilience gated. Yeah. High resilience. So, that's so overall, I mean, that, that's going to be a huge change to the game. Like, you should see... Now, that range right there, like, a lot of people are talking about adaptives in, in 140s, but, like, what you should really be thinking about is pulse rifles, dude. Pulse rifles, your ag frame pulses your desperados yeah. that's gonna take the place that's definitely gonna take the place of a 120 dude. yeah it will thousand percent you're gonna see those you're gonna see uh grid skipper because yep. like literally it's it's placing it in those ranges and this this thing's gonna stop them now because it doesn't have the leniency with the range and the damage yep 100 percent yeah, I think you're spot on with that. I think aggressive pulse rifles, people are going to start gravitating towards those as they're, you know, a little bit more safer ranged options that still put out incredible damage output. But I'm also excited for a little bit of scout rifles able to shine a little bit more. You know how much I love Mida. So hopefully Mida will be able to fulfill its role just a little, a little tiny bit better. Although I don't see those changing, those scout rifles changing from like B tier weapons. I, dude, like I do. I do. I do. You Honestly, do. I can imagine. I do because like. Really? If, if that's if they're starting at 80 damage and start hitting fall off at 37 meters think of Mida at back mohawk on oh um you, you know what map i'm talking about um i can't think of the name but there's a lot of places where you could lane and nothing yeah. can touch you yeah no you're not wrong It'll be interesting to see how these weapons play out with some of the top players and knowing how to put pressure and, and close the gap and if they'll hold yeah. up. And that, that's what I'm really excited to see with these changes, really. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I really don't know how it's going to go. You make some really good points, too. Another thing to think Bannerfall. of here is... Um, Bannerfall. Uh, oh, Bannerfall. <laughs> yeah, we're so... Oh, my God. I don't know how I didn't think of that. I knew, I I know, knew the place you were talking about. I know where... Yeah. Um... I was going to say, it was suggested to me here, no time to explain. I believe that weapon is already one of the most broken, insanely good. I say broken, like, uh, exaggerating. In a good way. In a good yeah, way. In a, in a good like, way. Oh, like, it is, it's crack. It is so insanely strong, and all I see from this swab is no time. It's about to, it's about to really, like, be better than it's ever been. Can't help but notice you didn't bring up Skyburner's Oath. Not, not one time. I mean, you know, I, it, that, I'm that thing looks like a joke, but it's actually got... Every time I look at it, I'm like, these are surprisingly better stats than what I remember. I mean, Vigilance Wing, like, there, there's a lot that could start becoming... Be, because of that range, dude. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited for it. Me too. I mean, I do... I, dude, I love Igneous Hammer. I love the feel and the look of those weapons, but... It's it's to a point now that you're either using that or you're kind of behind, you know. Yeah, I and they, I think they that, gonna... yeah, go on. Go ahead. No, oh, I was yeah, just gonna go. keep going on that list. I was gonna keep going on that list. That's what I was gonna do. <laughs> so, yeah, it works out. Cool, cool. Go ahead. You can read uh, that one. Oh, okay. I reduced aim assist minimum fall off distance by one to two meters depending on the range stat. And wait, we want to talk about this first. Let's talk about this before we move on. Um, um, what do you think about this? Most people, like if you have an igneous hammer or a bottom dollar, you have a pretty, pretty high range stat. And those have really high base range stat anyway. Like a lot yeah. of my hammers are over 90 range. So one to two meters, I would, I would assume that 95 and above is getting the, the two meter nerf and 90 below is like that 0.5 to 1 meter nerf that they're talking about. It isn't, mm, I don't think it's going to yeah. be that big of, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue with these. I just think yeah. just like with most weapons, it's going to fall within a set range and start having the fall off. 
Yeah. So I agree. Not, I like the I'm change. Not worried about that. I like the change because these weapons don't deserve, I think, to be as forgiving as they are at, at some of these extreme ranges, where it becomes like it's they're now somehow more forgiving because we everything we know about the aim assist cone and the how that works and zoom and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, all the that massive jazz. on a hand cannon. Right, exactly. It, it gets to the point where it's so crazy that it's somehow more forgiving than a pulse and or a scout in their ranges. So I think this is the, just them kind of adjusting whatever curve the range stat scaler works on, right? So what we're probably going to see is at that higher end, like you said, that higher end of range, they're going to fall off sooner with aim assist. Whereas like if you have a mid range or even if you're, you're kind of rocking the iron gaze rule like I am on my steady hand, you're probably not going to see a difference. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, the Iron Gaze roll kind of sticks out a little bit more after that, too. Good point. Yep. So, Want to go with the uh, next reduced, point? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Reduce damage minimum fall off distance by one meter. Um, it reduces their damage fall off advantage over other hand cannons to one meter. As usual, this is one meter before the zoom scaler. Um, so under the hood, the aim assist is getting nuked one to two meters, but actual in-game fall off distance is one. Um, like I said, it's, it's just going to have a set range now, dude. I think it's going to be about, yeah. th it's 35 to about 39 meters now, 30, 35 to 40. High range palindrome gets to 36, dude. So that's a range finder palindrome. Yep. How do you, so I have a question from chat and I'm, uh, I'm also interested in this. How do we see the 180s comparing and performing in this post aggressive nerf world? I think Honestly, like, I, I think it's going to be about the same because I think a lot of people are going to mm -hmm. go to 140s and 140s do dominate the, those, dude. When a lot of people are using the 120s, you can get mm -hmm. away with that one second TTK. Because yeah. mm -hmm. if, if, if if a 120 misses just one shot, you, you got them easy. No problem with a 180. But if everyone's using 140s, that could be a little bit different. Yeah, you got to be on point. And that's what I've always said about that archetype. You're going to use a 180. You want to use the easiest hand cannon or the hand cannon with the highest ease of use and highest consistency. Well, comes at a cost. You got to be perfect. If you're if you're getting the power to be perfect, you got to be perfect with them. And I think there is still a higher likelihood, especially when you think of something that we got epitaph now with high cows. I literally get tweets about people saying I can't aim back because of how ridiculous the high yeah, rate of fire plus that flinch fire. is so that's bound to mess up 140s and probably knock them off their optimal time to kill but you have no room to miss your opt optimal time to kill as well um i think that they are going to be better range contenders without 120s kind of stepping on them at range now because the way i've always seen stability and what i've loved about the one the 180s is that they don't get the damage fall off at range sure like they don't maintain their damage great but you can just continually keep shooting at someone you don't have a recoil to worry about your your accuracy cone stays stays pretty tight especially if you slap on double targeting you're pretty much just gonna keep you know hitting like even if it's small damage headshots repeatedly which still provides flinch still puts down pressure and adds up over a short period of time so I think they'll have a little bit better of a time, but probably not too much drastic of a difference other than what cool guy said, which is if people are using 140s now, prepare to perform perfectly. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it, it's, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's a new scenario, essentially. Like, it, it could do well before, I think, because the one second TTK of a regular 120 and the range that they had. So like, you can kind of nip around, but if players are playing a little bit closer, and are doing max damage. Let's say Ace of Spades is out there, Hawk Moon, Last Word. There's a lot of good hand cannons, dude. So, yep. Yes, there is. Let me move on to uh, quickly about perk changes. Before we do that, we actually yeah. forgot to talk about, we barely talked about it, but slug shotguns. So, slug shotguns oh. now in comparison to normal shotguns. I think this is really interesting. I don't know what your immediate thoughts on this are, but it's like a little hard to think about almost how these will compare now. Dude, for me, um, a slug shotgun has always been like if I'm doing a melee build, because I mean, you cannot kill them to the body and they're doing what, 142, 138 something to the body. So 
they've always had what is it 10 and a half 11 meters 11.3 what's the exact one for a max range like no swashbuckler no opening shot oh it's like it's like 11 meters yeah i think it's uh, it's something like temp something mundane like that yeah you're right and it was continued yeah but like you could throw a slug to the body and like if synthoseps are coming back if you know people are using top tree arc strider for the melee range especially to get melee builds going um it could be really really good sliding in slug to the body melee if people aren't able to double up with a regular shotgun like that becomes an even better tactic if a shotgun melee is like one of the best ways to get shotgun kills now the slug would outperform a regular shotgun if you if you're going that route so mm -hmm. i think that this could go roadborne yeah oh yeah i will get into the exotic options in a second but i i think this can go in a couple different ways on one hand i see slug shotguns now having a bigger gap of lethality against normal shotguns because the one hit kill range is, diff is, is different now, which means slug shotguns mm -hmm. really have the power to separate themselves from, sl uh, from normal shotguns, which is, uh, you know, almost concerning with, with, you know, Dude, before they already can destroy them. It's double the range now. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a little crazy to think about on the other hand of things really good players i feel like again are still gonna prime you with damage and potentially map you from even further now right because of that increased damage fall off um lasting or you know going further out that means again we just got reese walker i talked about this we got reese walker we got like retold we have these archetypes that have these massive snap bars that are now gonna matter more potentially i think they're gonna matter more which means they're going to map you like maybe either one hit kill is not going to be great. But once if you're primed like hand cannon shots to the body or something, they're probably going to map you then further before potentially. So will good players still put an immense amount of pressure on slug shotgun users? And I think so because of that. So it's an inch really interesting trade off here. And I don't know how it's going to how it's going to really going to play out. I think that we're about to see the Spectral Blade Chaperone again. I think that's going to be one of the top three classes, dude. Yeah, They're, and I... Like top, yeah. top three meta picks. Like, I, I see it coming. I, I kind of oh, see yeah. it now, but it, when, when those are down by two meters, like, every shotgun is pulled in by two meters. And, like, they didn't specifically say that it was just the aggressive frames that are getting pulled in. They said, reduce shotgun damage fall out by two yes. meters. Like, yes. that's a blanket statement. That's everything, yep. So, I mean, Roadborne's getting up to that 14 meter range, but it just in general, it's hitting over 10. You're going to see Spectral Blades again. Yep. Shotguns are now... Uh, my my takeaway from this, all in all, cool guys, shotguns are cleanup weapons now. You need to complement them. You need something, whatever it might be. And what that means is the slug shotguns. And when we talk about, most importantly, like you just said, the exotic options, man, they are going to separate themselves like more than ever they have more room to operate than ever i'm honestly i'm a bit scared um and this is what i was scared about with a shotgun change without touching these crazy exotic options we have chaperone like you just mentioned which i already think was meta and if it wasn't before it is now duality which gets the one hit of the slug but still gets a fall back on its shotgun potential or normal shotgun potential and it has uh, equal or similar range to, to chaperone without roadborne which is insane. And then we have Lord of Wolves, which I've been using recently. <laughs> and like the thought of me having more safety to play in with Lord of Wolves is like tremendously scary to me. Like, yeah. I think these three weapons will dominate shotgun usage now. Sure, great players are always, I, I really think that the, the top of the top players are gonna be the ones that make the instantaneous damage of a traditional shotgun still relevant with the way they're able to prime people and capitalize on damage but i think for like middle of the pack and even at a high level play those options are going to be more disgusting than ever well like in you kind of extrapolate like depending on the player like i think a lot of players will switch to chaperone and like i see it in chat that i, I thought it earlier dude bastion is about to have a lot of high yep, Bastion. Too. oh man oh yeah yes it is and not um, to mention, those options that were mentioned, they all have high handling. 
Try these don't yeah. have quick try anymore. Like they're all like low hand. Like I mean, like the the precision archetype we which we together projected to be the best archetype does have that. Sure, but I mean, you know, my point is these these shotguns are lacking nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should should be interesting, man. We're gonna find out on Tuesday. Yep. This is uh. Yeah, I'm prepared for the exotics lock uh, shotgun meta to come out. Well, I mean, I, I, it even going back to Destiny One, dude. Like, I was always, but I mean, it was a different time, right? We had one eleven mm -hmm. last words and two tap thorns. Yeah. But I've I, like for me, like you should make the exotic special weapons good enough. Like back then, it was infective and <laughs> oh, pocket infinity. Well, pocket infinity was a little too much, but you know. Yep. If, if those are good, that takes a last word out of someone's hands. That takes a hawk moon out of someone's hands. An ace of spades, right? Yep. So, you know, your exotic choice to me should always be not necessarily difficult, but you should really think about it. A lot of weapons are so good in the game, people run around with Wardcliffe Coil to this day, five years later, right? But, you know, if the, if the duality is really good, the chaperone, yep. you know, that takes something out of someone's hands and put something in that they normally wouldn't do i always think that that's a good thing but but do you think I, this I, is I, enough of a trade-off do you because what i'm scared of with this what i'm really nervous about with this is that we have a lot of we have better legendary options i think than ever sure exotics dude exotics are strong thorn strong it's gonna be pretty maybe good again hawkman we mentioned like ace all of these they're great but are they that much better than their legendary counterparts as these exotic specials are going to be than now their counterparts and that's what i'm worried about i'm worried about that we're going to see the same hold forward you know you know craziness but it's going to be an exotic shotgun in people's hands now or a bastion dude straight up i mean there, there's there's still a play for sidearms dude as crazy as that sounds like there's a play for devil's ruin Sure. So, I mean, it's got it's got the the fusion in it. It also has a distance. It has zero recoil because it has one of those adaptive triggers. Um, farewell. Like, there's a ton of good. Like, all the three burst omelons. Like, I, I like true vanguard is probably really happy. I mean, I like sidearms too. But like, if they have to get that much closer, I can't tell you how many times I've been. You know, them being about, I don't know one one basically one burst away when i'm using a sidearm but they get me because of the range of a shotgun so i mean may, maybe that that nerfs could be enough for shotgun yep, or for sidearm maybe. to shine a little bit oh. i hope so it, but all in all the exotics worry me but i hope so and, and to add to that i am excited for the smgs too which is great they want to keep the fast firing and hip, but believe they do believe that's like the kind of power fantasy, the feel of the weapon. Uh, but so what they did is they removed the hip fire damage fall off scaler was 1.8 times to match the zoom. So basically within hip fire, it's a scout rifle with near infinite range on a PVP map. So they took that away. And from what I understand, it's just going to be <coughs> whatever they put it at because the 1.8 is usually used as the what's what I'm looking for is like well th whatever the ADS is I don't know what the like inherent base mm -hmm. zoom is for hip fire so I don't know what it's going to do yeah that's that's interesting um, so they remove the so the damage is the same but they remove the damage fall off scalar from hip fire but we don't know the base like of what that is. Is it just 1.0? Is that is that what it? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. But we don't. Either way, we don't know what that base is to truly understand what these numbers are going to be. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. We we'll just have to see it in game. I would assume it's going to be 25 to 30 meters. I would. That, that's just my so gut. Too. But that remember, I mean, it, it also does have the perk as you start landing headshots, you start ramping up damage with skull perk. It'll make uh, the aim assist cone angle hip scaler reduced from 1.5 to 1.2. And that's actually a big change. That's a massive change. Um, you know, because you have to think 
all that stuff being tied in you know accuracy is one like the biggest thing especially now since they took away that 1.8 scaler um so they're making that smaller making the accuracy smaller it's making everything smaller meaning that the shot just simply could miss so what do you think i i'm i'm really torn on these changes i'm not gonna lie i feel like I feel like these changes for what they are and the state of the weapon on mouse and keyboard currently are subtle. I think they're still subtle and I think this weapon's still going to be very strong and when we take into consideration the changes to things like uh, the aggressives, the yeah these feel like a little bit more subtle changes. Don't get me wrong, the, for, for these categories specifically, they feel quite massive for the categories but you know I, I was really thinking like bring the damage down of the, the the hip fire damage down you know uh, I, I don't know like i i thought i really thought that's what it was when we were initially reading it but i, I was wrong i was like oh the damage fall off scaler and i was like kind of scratching my head at that the aim assist cone thing i think that's a really big change but it's as a controller user a bit disappointing simply because, yeah, I mean, because it was already very inconsistent I love this weapon. It reminds me of the DMR from Halo. I've tried to make this work and use it numerous times. I I pull my hair out with simply how inconsistent to me it feels. So, like, I feel like so that's gonna hurt also, controller. There's also a part of me that like is hoping, and this this actually just makes sense in my head. So the Amos Cone Angle they reduce it from 1.5 to 1.2. That might actually help a controller player, be like in the sense that you have to aim so high with DMT on it with the oh, controller. Yeah. I don't know why. So mm -hmm. I think that that might actually help, if that makes sense. Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah, potentially, yeah. I mean, or it could be the complete opposite of what I'm thinking. That you might have to actually aim a little bit higher. I don't know. Yeah, may, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, man. I, these are changes that I'm reading. I'm like, I really think we're not going to fully understand the magnitude of these until we actually try it and until it gets in the hands of of course most importantly mouse and keyboard players and to see the difference maybe on controller but i don't see it on xbox um, yeah i don't see i really it, don't man. like i said i've tried to use this weapon so much and i'm like i want to use it but i'm like this doesn't feel consistent doesn't feel right uh, so the the only time i have seen it is when and it's obvious you can see it with their movement they're playing with the zim like that's the only time i see dmt on console uh, when, they're, when, they're using, when they're using mouse and keyboard on console, it's the only time. To be honest, I don't know if you're getting these vibes. For me, I feel like these changes are really, and I mean, hey, like they even say it, really trying their hardest to like be like, okay, this is enough for mouse and keyboard to make a difference, but not enough to break controller or, you know, like to make it any worse on controller. But I don't know if it's doing enough of either. Like, does that make sense? It's like, it's trying hard to do, like, to maintain both of these things, like, bring down on MNK, make better on controller, but not doing maybe well enough on either. Like, it's kind of still hurting controller and kind of not doing enough on MNK potentially. I don't know. Dude, like, they obviously have a hard time with it. I mean, yeah. up until recently, Last Word was, like, really hard to use with MNK. And like talking with some, you know, I use a little, like, I don't really know because I play mostly controller, but, you know, Cam was saying that it's a little bit better. Um, all these little changes that they do with the hip fire on these things. So um, it's obvious to me. I mean, they're, they're, they're having a lot of issue with hip fire weapons. Yeah. Cross, cross platform. Right. I mean, it's, it's because it's, you have more precision at the hip with, with uh with mouse and keyboard right and we on that podcast we asked about last word last word is a specifically tuned weapon and the and i think we learned this i believe this isn't in contrast to that i'm not sure if i'm correct or not on that but at least if that wasn't confirmed it gave me the vibes then if, if the last words is a specifically tuned weapon i'd love for this to be as well because yeah i don't know like this change just doesn't I'm not sure it's going to be enough for MK to really be different, and I'm not sure it's going to be enough to not hurt controller. Like, so when I think of the, like, like I said in my head, like when I think of the average distance for a mid-range gunfight, I think, um, oh, why am I blanking on maps? 
Um, it's the one... Oh. We'll just get back to that. God, what is it called? You know, I, I have like 2,000 PvP hours, and of course I'm blanking on maps. But I, I do think it's going to be about 25 to 30 meters. And if that's, if that's the case, like, M and K is still going to dominate in that in that range, dude. So, I mean, we just got to see what it does. Because it is coded as a scout rifle. Yep. So, it's probably going to be fairly large. Or fairly long range, as I should say. I don't know. I like. I don't know what to really make of that. It sounds like they're taking very special care of it. Because it is such a cool weapon. 